Hello class, this is Miss Augustine, and today we are going to talk about calorimetry, and we're actually going to try to do an experiment from my kitchen since we're distance learning. So we're going to use a calorimeter to do a specific heat experiment and determine the specific heat of a substance. So for starters, what is a calorimeter? A calorimeter is an insulated device that's used to measure the absorption or release of heat, so heat changes, that happen when chemical or physical processes take place. And calorimeters may be super simple, like a styrofoam cup, which is what we're going to use today, or a soda can, or they can be very complex, um, something called a bomb calorimeter that's quite fancy, not what I have at home. So in solving for specific heat, you use this thing called a calorimeter, and again, it's a device that's used to measure um, specific heat uh, by controlling and measuring the changes in heat, uh, the energy transfer that takes place. So you might use something in lab, and if we were in school, we would use something like this, which is a styrofoam cup inside of another styrofoam cup. And in industry, you would use something very fancy like this, where you have a stainless steel container and inside of it another container and water in between the two and the reason there's water here is because with calorimetry you measure what happens to the water so right here we're going to burn something inside this second container and then we're going to measure the temperature of the water and if the water temperature goes up we know it went up because it absorbed the energy that was released when this was burned. So that's the basic concept behind solving for specific heat. So if you measure what happens to water and you know all of the constants for water, then you can determine what the specific heat is uh, for a substance. So calorimetry is the accurate and precise measurement of the heat changes for physical and chemical processes and the heat released by the system is equal to the heat absorbed by the surroundings. So if we see what happens to water, then we can figure out how much was released by the other substance. So when we calculate specific heat, our equation is Q, which is the change in heat, heat absorbed or released, is equal to the mass of the substance times its specific heat capacity times the change in temperature. And remember, for temperature, delta T is always T2 minus T1. So C stands for specific heat, which is measured in joules per gram degree C. M is the mass. Q is heat either in joules or calories. Today it'll be in joules. And delta T is always the temperature change, and it's always uh, T2 minus T1. So when you're calculating delta T, it's always T2, T final, minus T1, T initial. So there's two forms to this equation. There's Q equals MC delta T, or rearranging C is equal to Q over M delta T. So again, two forms of the equation. If we're solving for Q, it would be MC delta T, and if we're solving for C, it's Q divided by M delta T. And again, the specific heat of water is 4.184 joules per gram degree C. So today the question is, how can we use calorimetry to calculate the specific heat capacity of a rock? We're going to use water as a reference. We're going to set up a calorimeter in Ms. Augustine's kitchen. We're going to measure the amount of heat gained by a known amount of water, and we're going to use the information gained from the water to calculate the heat lost by the rock. So what we're going to be doing is I'm going to take my rock, I'm going to measure its mass, and then I'm going to put it into a pot of boiling water and let it sit for 10 minutes in the boiling water. Then I'm going to take my rock that's now quite hot, and I'm going to dump it into water that's in a styrofoam cup and I'm going to measure the temperature changes. So it's a two-step calculation that we will get to soon. And my calorimeter normally in the lab would look like this, a styrofoam cup and a beaker, but in my kitchen it looked a little different. So step one is going to be measuring the mass of the rock.
which in this case, I have a kitchen scale and I put my rock on it and it is 100 grams. And then step two is going to be measure out a known quantity of water and add it to a calorimeter. And since the water has a density of one gram per mil, you can measure the volume of the water, which will give you its mass as well. So 100 mils of water was placed in a calorimeter, which is the same as 100 grams of water. And then my step three will be placing the rock into the beaker or pot of boiling water and allowing it to stand for 10 minutes to ensure that it is the same temperature as the water. So now, the next step would be measuring the temperature of the boiling water, and this will be the same temperature as the rock if we leave the rock in there long enough. And then we'll measure the temperature of the water in the calorimeter, and that's the styrofoam cup, and that's going to tell me the initial temperature of the water. So the rock is starting out hot, the water is starting out cool, and uh, spoiler alert, when I put the hot rock into the water, the temperature is going to go up. So step six, using tongs, take the rock out of the boiling water, place it in the styrofoam cup containing the cool water. Step seven, monitor the temperature of the rock and water mixture and record the highest temperature of the mixture. So here come the videos. Okay, so I have a pot of water boiling on the stove. And I have a oops, okay. digital thermometer, so I have a pot and I'm going to put the digital thermometer, and I have a digital thermometer, and I'm going to put the digital thermometer into the water, and hopefully it will read 100 degrees C. Now I'm going to take a rock, and I'm going to place the rock into the boiling water, and I'm going to set a timer for 10 minutes. I will turn off the video, we will not be watching, but I'm gonna get it boiling a little bit stronger, and I'm gonna let it boil for 10 minutes. Now I have water boiling, and I've placed a rock into the boiling water. And the water is at 100. So now I've set up a crude calorimeter, which is a styrofoam cup and a Pyrex measuring cup, and measured in exactly uh, 100 mils of water, and it's at 7.5 degrees C, 7.5, 7.6. So I've written down here that the initial temperature of the water is 7.4, 7.5. And my rock in my boiling water is at 100 degrees C. I'm going to take my hot rock, steaming, and I'm going to plunge it into the water. And now I'm going to measure the temperature of the water. And we're just going to watch the highest temperature that the water gets to before it starts to fall again. So with the help of Alexa, I set a timer and after five minutes, my final temperature of my water and my rock mixture, notice the rock is still in there, the final temperature is 14.4 degrees C. So I'm going to write that in. So again, they started at different temperatures. The water started at 7.4. The rock started at 100, but they both ended at the same temperature because they're in the same cup of water. Okay, so now we're continuing with our specific heat of the rock. And we're going to look at water and the heat gained by the water. So the initial temperature of the water was 7.4. Its final temperature, which was when the rock was in the cup, was 14.5. Delta T is 7.1, and the mass of my, my water was 100 grams because I used 100 mils. And the C for water is a constant, 4.184. Now, for the rock, the initial temperature was 100 degrees C because it was in boiling water for 10 minutes. 
its final temperature was the same as the water, 14.5. The delta T was negative 85. It went from hot to cold, T2 minus T1, so it lost energy, so it's got a negative delta T, and the mass was 100 grams, and we're going to calculate its C. So heat lost by the rock is equal to heat gained by the water. Since we know the specific heat of the water, we can calculate the energy gained by water. We're going to do that first. So for water, there's my information again. And then the heat gained by the water, Q, is uh, governed by the equation mc delta t. I'm going to plug in my numbers, my 100 grams, my 4.184, and my delta t. And then I'm going to cancel out grams, and I'm going to cancel out degrees c. And so in joules, my Q is 2970.64. I can only have two sig figs, so I'm going to round that to 3.0 times 10 to the 3, which is roughly 3,000 joules. So the heat gained by the water is 3,000 joules. Now, for my rock, there's all my information, and the Q for the rock is the same as the Q for the water, heat lost by the rock. It's a negative number because the rock lost energy. So the heat lost by the rock, the Q, is negative 3.0. The specific heat, rearranging our equation, is Q over m delta t. Plugging in the numbers, the specific heat for my rock is equal to the heat lost by the rock divided by its mass divided by its change in temperature. Now notice it lost energy, so its Q was negative. It lost energy, so its delta T is negative. That results in a positive number for specific heat, which is correct. And I'm going to round that to two sig figs, so my specific heat for my rock is 0 0.35 joules per gram degree C. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how we do a specific heat capacity experiment using a calorimeter. This is Ms. Augustine signing off.